All right. All right, here we are. What's up, Papa? Yo, Bro, it's can... exciting to be in your place starting to do something like this yeah. because we, we talked about this for so long. We did. And, like, we did. The electricity is just flowing through you right now. The minute you start, man, it's just... It's crazy, right? Yeah. What's more crazy is that we've been so fucking busy yeah. that we haven't seen each other for like 20 days, bro. Yeah, yeah about over two weeks. For the sure. last time yeah. we made a movie, uh, which is the movie we're releasing today, the video, was uh, February 9th. The Gates one? No, the the Gates one was before that. The Gates was February 3rd or 5th. 5th. Oh. Because we recorded that week. We recorded on Monday. That's right, that's right. And we recorded on... Uh, we went to Flushing. We went to Flushing, exactly. Yeah. But now, look, it's the 28th, and, bro, life, life takes yeah. a toll. Work, man, work. That's what it is. Yeah. You, you have a life, I have a life, but this is a part of our life, so we have to make sure that we, we come here to fulfill. We have to do it. My man's leaving to Puerto Rico, so if he leaves for 20 days and we don't have episodes, we lose the algo, and the algo is favoring us. Yeah, it kind of likes us right now. Yeah, appreciate yeah, yeah. you guys for that. It is. Yo, listen, guys, ever since we opened up the uh, Pilots and Pirates Instagram account, it's we have a hundred and twenty followers, I think, right Not now. Bad. Not but bad. our videos are getting five hundred to a thousand views, which is unbelievable. Because awesome. normally you only get about three percent of your viewing, and we're getting like three hundred percent of our viewing. So it's it's incredible, and that's thanks to all of you. Yeah. And this is why we get together and we do this. Shit yeah, right make now. it happen again. Make it happen. Make it happen for sure. Exactly. Keep exactly. it going. Respect. One love. Thank you to everybody, and we'll never get tired of being grateful and having gratitude towards all of you, because that's what makes this happen. Otherwise, it would just be a video on social media, not getting any burn, and there would be no need for me and Manny to get together on a Wednesday night in my house. We could just leave it till he gets back from Puerto Rico, but right. we don't want to leave you guys waiting, because I know mm. a lot of you like to watch these videos, have a, a smoke and a pancake, a bong and a blitz. You know, there's no please in you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there is. But and there is. We're here, and that's what we're doing. We're serving some goods for y'all. Exactly. So, how you how you feeling, bro? What, what what what's on your mind? What's on my mind? There's so much on my mind. You know, jumbled up. But um, we've been talking about this subject for a little while. We were talking about what is it that we like to use. What are we gonna re up on? And to stay with that because you stay with the brands that you know and trust, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we wanted to play around with this um, in conversation sake, like which were your, you know, uh, tops or your favorite brands? Mm -hmm. Which are your favorite FPV brands? My my number one top favorite brand uh, would have to be Fetech, you know, uh, which once upon a time it wasn't Fetech, it was Flyduino. Yeah. But after COVID, uh, all these transformations happened and Flyduino phased out and Fetech took over while... Yes, uh, we have uh, Kiss Ultra by Alexander Fedorov, but that's just the FC. Okay. Fetech produces the FC and the ESC, the combination, which is what Flyduino did. You flew with the Kiss V2 and their individuals, and then afterwards they came out with the 4-in-1. That was a piece of shit, but <laughs> they had the 4-in-1. And not a piece of shit because of its flight capabilities. It was a piece of shit because it would burn. Real easily. Heard about that a lot. And the main reason for that was more than anything that it was a 5S ESC, but we were using it with 6S oh, LiPo. frying it. So if you got caught on something, fire. Woof. I have a video uh, in a park in China where I hit a branch, I land, like I don't land, I crash, but I crash land, and woof, you see the shit go on fire. Man. Yeah, Gross. yeah. And, and as the FedTech, as KISS users know, it's not cheap. Right. Kiss is the most expensive brand out there. And for example, a Fettech 45 amp ESC, it's 90 bones. And the 65 amp, it's a buck 30. So at that price, why is it your favorite? Because of the way it flies. That's really all, all it is. Mm. The way I have not been able to achieve the same flight characteristics out of anything else. I've gotten close. Now, especially with Betaflight and their uh, presets, like mm. Superfly, for example, right. I've gotten it very close. And if I don't fly a Fetech quad, then I won't tell the difference. But the minute I switch mm -hmm. from that Superfly tune to Fetech, I'm like, mm. <laughs> okay, you know? Mm. So for me, just, I, I don't know if you remember when we started flying uh, uh, like about a year ago, maybe a little bit more, and then I was transitioning. Um, uh, I was telling you that I could not achieve 
the things that I wanted to achieve while I was flying. It was just, I would come home, I would watch the videos, and it just, it didn't look like my flying from before, from my KISS flying. So at one point, after mm. I had tested Diatone and Hobby Wing and Team remember. Motor, you remember? I, remember. Yeah, I, remember. I switched back to Fatec. And now I love how my flying looks yeah. because it's back to what I was used right, to, you right. know? And no matter what I did with beta flight, it just, I, whenever I would come out of a roll or a flip, it just looked robotic. There was no like smoothness to it. It was like, it was tuned so well that it would go bam and stop. While in Kiss, it's like, mm, and it stops smoothly on it, you know? that it, it, It's as if Kiss dampens the whole movement more. So that's why for me, Word. my favorite brand and and my favorite brand for electronics, right? Because mm. there's so many different components yeah. that they're on the drone. So for an ESC and an FC, Fatec. Fatec. All day, bro. What about you? I'm not gonna front, man. It it's when I'm going to go back to when I started because they've been a favorite of mine with all types of components, you know, not just uh not just stacks, motors, you know, T motor T Motor is a great brand, and I'm gonna start with that one first because I got a bunch of them as well. Because you know, there's there's the frames, you know, mm -hmm. there's the motors and components and stuff like that. But I like to say T Motor, not in competition with what you're saying, just because they're a trusted brand. You know, they've been uh, a part of the game for quite some time, right? I mean, way before I even got around, um, around or involved. Um, they're still pioneers. They're still putting out the hits. Um, they got a lot of. Uh, amazing products and uh, components, man, that the pros love and use, and not only the pros, the hobbyists uh, that share alike. And it's I'm speaking off of experience, really, you know, because T Motors always done me pretty darn good, unless if I I beat it up, which I do beat it up a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> beat it up. But yeah, but beat um, it up. yeah, I'm gonna go with T Motor, man, because it's a combination of their their they have different series. They have the premium series, they have pro series, they have also the budget series as well. And I'm you know I you know. You can't for a person like myself if i'm trying to build a budget brand you know where i'm going i'm going to the vlock series and i'm absolutely you know all around um t motor stack t motor um uh motors and um yeah man i even like the propellers yeah they're good the, the propellers were great yeah but you know you have to switch and, up and listen i i i'll let you in on on a little secret well not a little secret but past i was a t motor guy until i went to flight one right and then i went to kiss and then i never went back but T Motor for me, the uh, what was it? The F fifty five A. That was my ESC. That was the ESC yeah. I used, and I used the uh, the F four, the T Motor F four, and the T Motor props. While I wasn't my freestyle prop, it was the prop that I used, the fifty one forty three yeah. for drifting. Yes, yes. Uh, those were the ones that would give me the the most speed and the most. Uh, it felt really good. So T Motor pioneer in the absolute, industry. Absolute salute. One hundred percent. We respect you on Incredible. this side of the water. So that's your favorite FC ESC combo and and motors and too. Motors, man. And keep, motors yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect like combination for me. For me, I would say the same. And I'll I'll, I'll say this. T Motor was my f I only use T Motor motors, the F40s, the mm. F60s, uh then the Velox and then the Pacers. As a matter of fact, oh. one of my favorite motors, DRP motors. Let's talk about it. Were the Pacers. The Pacers for me as well. Incredible motors. I, it came in all sizes, all KVs, smooth as hell, lots of punch, Absolutely. very good freestyle motors. But I don't know what happened with T Motor and there was a split and Axis was created mm. with some of the T Motor people. Mm. And I I was reluctant to try them because I'm not a big fan of trying new new companies mm -hmm. until I hear stuff about it. Okay. And what cemented my swap over was Blackbird. Mm -hmm. My man Blackbird, what's up, bro? You're Peace. always you're always gonna be spoken about because it's a to part me, of the journey. it's one of the the greatest motor that has ever been made. And I was a T Motor Blackbird guy. And then when Axis came out, I was like, oh, shit. And I knew immediately that it was the people from T-Motor. But that doesn't really mean much because you don't know who is yeah. coming out of there, right. you know. But when Blackbird switched and then I started hearing problems about the T-Motor bells, that they were using different materials and they were breaking more and it was easier to bend them, which was weird because the Pacers took a beating. Yeah. The V-Lox never did. I'm not going to say that the V-Lox were good at taking a beating because mm -hmm. they were not. They would take hits. But the Pacers were durable. Yeah, sure. I beat the crap out of the Pacers. Same. But then when I switched to Blackbird, I fell in love. And I was like, this is the motor. That's it. I didn't care. It was a $27 motor or a $30 motor. I don't know exactly how much. 
But I was, I was fighting you on that. Yeah, I, did, I yeah. did not want to purchase this motor. It a whole year and a half maybe until I purchased my first set of Axis motors, and yeah. I too was blown away by them. For They're sure. amazing. Yeah. They are what T Motor was to me once upon a time, and I don't fly any other motor. Uh, I and yeah. I've tried. Uh, I okay. Hold on. Let me let me let me switch that around. I, I don't fly any other five inch motor. Because I don't use Axis for center lifters and bigger stuff. Okay, That's all okay. Brother Hobby. Right. Right? Because Brother Hobby is one of the industry standards for bigger drones. You know, the 2810s, the 2812s, and all those Yeah, motors. they cater to those. But for what we're speaking about, for freestylers, Axis all day. All day. And not, not even a need for the AFs, the AEs. The A-Series too. Beautiful Yeah, motors. talk about them, talk about them, because we, we we touched upon this before, but, you know, there's a difference in both, but they're still good, but... They are, they are. I, I'm the next, I'm building a new quad with the KISS Ultra, because I've heard amazing things about it, and uh, the main reason, and I'm sorry, FedTech, I just don't like Alpha, and mm. if you're still on the Legacy KISS, then the OSD with the O3 Air Unit and the goggles, too, is on and off. It like, mm. and, and you want to hear something funny? Sure. So my FedTech quads on the initial plug-in of the day, every single time I fly, I have full OSD, everything, my mm. amps, my RSI, everything. And then once I disconnect that one and I go to the second plug-in, done. No more OSD. Disappears. The, what, what? No, it just disappears. It just disappears. All I have is like the default voltage that the goggles come with, right. you know, like the whatever it is. But my, the rest, my my amps, my milliamp draw, my RSI, all that, gone. What do you think it could be? No clue. I haven't really went to investigate yet. And I've spoken to a few people, specifically my dude, you know, Pinky's Up. Mm. Uh, and he, com you know, he concurs that like, it's just on and off. Remy as well. I built Remy a couple of uh, a six inch and a five inch FETEC quad with O3 units and goggles too. Word. Same thing. It's on and off. So it's a glitch that maybe they have to fix. It's a glitch, but because it's legacy, they're not really doing updates anymore. Because Ooh. now, uh, you know, uh, FETEC is doing the updates to the Alpha, which I love FETEC, but I will stay with FETEC legacy. I don't like Alpha. I hear it flies great, mm -hmm. but tuning it, went from the kisses keep it super simple right and when they went to alpha it was no longer simple they turned it into something like beta flight so for mm. that i'll go to beta flight that's a quarter of the price you know what i love about kiss is to keep it super simple the the gui for kiss is yeah. incredibly incredibly simple man I haven't delved into that because of the price range, but I did. I did shake on it and mm -hmm. said that this year was the year Absolutely. that I will be uh, building a full fat tech quad. L listen, and your hesitation is warranted because I know you're gonna love it because I haven't met anybody that has swapped over and not loved it. Same, same. I hear nothing nobody. but great things. Yeah, it's nobody. Just but the it's price pricey. point. There it's you go. Expensive. The price point. And man. if you're a basher like you are, yeah, because I'm not a basher. I'm a basher. Know? You are. So for me, it's not a problem because. Oh, let me knock on wood somewhere. <laughs> That's PVC. Let me knock some. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Knock on wood. Because I'm starting to push it a little bit more now. No, you are. You know? But that ESC has been there for like a year. You know? My, my, uh, my, um, the, the Apex on Blackbirds and Fettech, mm. that is like two years old. No way. I swear. No way. Yeah. I haven't used. I don't use it. Okay, like, but you have to say that. But you have yeah, to say I that. don't okay. use it. But okay. I did use it for a year. That was my drone until we developed the DRP frame, mm -hmm. and then that's it. Like I was flying on the DRP frame. Yeah. But that ESC uh, FC has bro in the snow. I used. It. Remember when we saw the snow and it comes like twitching. It's like tick, tick, tick. right, right. Throw it on top of the heater and <laughs> done. The next day is good Bacon. to go. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that the the price point is what kills people from FedTech. I'm gonna let me let me say that the price point from FedTech to uh, to like T Motor, there's a there's not that much of a difference though, because now the the yeah. T Motor stacks are starting to cost like one thirty, mm -hmm. one fifty, you know. But you could still get the cheaper versions, the Velox versions or whatever. I don't know yeah, that, exactly. Well, that's, oh, okay. I, I, know I sure do. I'm just yeah. saying. But but you know what? T Motor is great. Mm -hmm. But it, I don't see any difference between T-Motor and Diatone, for example. Whoa. And not quality-wise, flight-wise. So a lot of people over there are going to say a bunch of things, yeah, man. Yeah, they can say what they want. No, but but they they, have, it's okay. It's okay. Could, That's why we're talking yeah, about You this. could say what you want. But he, the thing is that 
beta flight now with all the options and presets and and rpm filter and dynamic things okay. they bro okay. i i put the same tune and different components and they fly the same they fly the same they don't fly like kiss but all the beta flights fly the same so uh, look my my cinewhoop Okay, my, my 95X, I just built a 95X. The 95 uh, XV3 frame with, I, I parted it out and I put it together. It has a Hack RC all-in-one with the Superfly tune, you know, fucking uh, tweaked for that. Flies great. Okay. It's not T-Motor. It's not Diatone. It's Hack RC. Uh, I have put on iFlight. I, I, I just repaired a quad. That bag over there is yeah. a quad for a guy... Get this. <laughs> I get a call from DRP, and this guy's like, dude, I've been highly recommended from somebody named, I'm not going to mention his name, named X, that does Hollywood films. Okay. I have no idea who this guy is. Hey, that's but, nice. That's but nice. they highly recommended the store. So this guy hits me up. He's like, dude, I'm having a hard time. I bought a BNF from iFlight, a Nazgul, with a TBS, and uh, it's analog. Can you tune it for me? And it goes back. To, all right. So it's funny how everything ties in. You tell me tune. And to me tune is fuck with the pids. Right? right, right. I think for you too. Correct. Absolutely. Right? For anybody yeah. that's a flyer that's been flying, a tune is pids. Right? But for him, the tune was find it and make the goggles work. So oh, I'm like, oh, so you need me to set man. it up. Man, I see. But didn't go, know. But it goes back to what we were saying that if you don't know the key words yeah. of this hobby, right. it's going to be very difficult to research mm. things because he's he's saying tune. So mm. when you go search, how do I tune my Nazgul? You're going to get a bunch of YouTube videos mm. that are going to tell you about PIDs. Yeah. You know? So it, it's the key words are very, very basic. But I put Superfly Tune on that. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's an iFly Blitz. All it's right. the cheapest line of iFly. Yeah, but still. But you, it you flies great. ripping? Yeah, but I didn't rip it, but you, I could hear it in the way it sounds and in the way it moves that it is, oh, okay. you know? Yeah, you know? yeah. So Basic. while, yes, T-Motor makes great components, I think Diatone makes equally great components. Okay, I'm not going to disagree because I do like Diatone. Yeah, Mongols I, are I, badass, I won't, bro. I won't put them, you know, an arm wrestling match because I'm going to say that one is better than the other. Mm -hmm. But they both perform, perform just as good yes. until, um, until the, the bash. Yes. Now, that's why I said I'm not talking quality. I'm talking flight performance. That's it. You know, and I'll tell you hey, something else. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, because with the new upgrades of the F sevens uh, and things of that nature, man, D Diatone has put out some some really brolic FCs, man, and yeah. they held up pretty darn good. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There, uh, Mamba has impressed the crap out of me because of where the price point is mm -hmm. and how well these things perform. Count on that. Yeah, shout out they to Diatone. They perform amazing. So, so it's not it's. The, the quality, I won't speak of because I really can't compare. I have no point of comparison. I haven't flown the new T-Motor shit. Mm -hmm. I've only flown the new Diatone stuff. Right. But, but I am a big, big believer that you pay what you get for. For sure. Now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Frame-wise, mm -hmm. let's put this stuff inside the frame. Frame-wise. Frame-wise, uh, Impulse RC. You know, I'm going to go there myself because we've tried them all. We've tried them all. I mean, every single one. I, from Canada, West Coast, overseas, all of them, you know? And it just comes right back to that standard Apex frame. The Apex. And, and I, I've said this before. It was the Alien. And from the Alien, I went to the, to the Apex. I, I, I won't say that I've tried them all because I have not. Manny has mm. definitely tried a lot more than I have. Spent a lot of money on you guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> but in the beginning, I did try all types of unibodies, uh, Jep RCs and mm -hmm. this and that. You know, uh, my Cinewhoops are QAVs and Diatone. Mm -hmm. So definitely. But for example, I've never tried an Armatan. I have no idea. And not because I don't think it's good. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the design. I don't like cages in uh, for a camera. I I don't like the way it looks. Man, I don't. I, I'm not I, a big fan. I do. I've never. You know. Actually, I have the Armaton Beaver. Okay. And a lot of people swear by uh, all the other ones. You know, the Chameleon. Shout out to uh, Kikalian and also the Marmot um, that Fly High loves. Mm -hmm. you, like they they sell it to me. You know, because it, it sounds good. I love the warranty thing and all of that. Mm -hmm. But that's what I also love about love about um, Impulse RC. You know. 
they, they, it's a brolic frame. You know, there's some tweaks and adjustments that had to been made. You know, of to course. the to the back of VTX plate. Um, but yeah, man, there's there's a hundred reasons why I love the Apex, and I do I do like um, what they've done with the Evo. I'm about the roll cage. Mm -hmm. The Evo doesn't have that roll cage. I kind of wish that it did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I'm I'm a I'm an Impulse RC guy, and I love that they had that warranty as well, where you can just show them your your serial number. You yep. know what I'm saying? Your your you know your baggie. You send them some pictures, and they're like, "Yo, send it back." Don't even, don't even worry about it. We got you. We're gonna send you something on the way. Yeah, yeah. That's no, it's dope. it's I amazing. That. I love that for the, the price point. See, that's what I was gonna touch on. I was gonna say the only negative to me, which is why we created the DRP frame, mm. is the price point. Mm. I don't want to pay ninety dollars for a frame. Right. It's not something I want to do. I would much rather play thirty, forty bucks, because I'm gonna go break them. Man, I like what you did there, though. But that's so important, man, to share that. The reason why we created the DR, mm -hmm. you created the DR. Oh well, we frame. did. We no, did. now it was we're, we, we're refining it yes, together. Yes, but that yes, was for your, sure. That well, was your it's idea well, first. credit to when credit's deserved is really Mark Brooklyn. Mark is the one that created out, the Brooklyn original. Mark. The original DRP frame, and then we've modified it through the years, mm -hmm. and now me and you are getting to, you know, where we're happy with it at least. Right, because of what it is we, you, we've used in the past, and now we're trying to come up with the right recipe mm -hmm. for something we love flying. And man, does that thing fly insane. It's impressive. It's really it's impressive. No. Uh, Greg, the designer, did an amazing job designing it. Shout out it. to you, Greg. It's, Thank you. It's a beefy uh, quad that mm -hmm. is lighter than the Apex. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because it is beefier than mm -hmm. the Apex. Yet it weighs less, yeah, which is amazing. Has that that nice back for the the back plate for yeah, the VTX, man. Yeah, man. Ain't snapped. The only thing I've snapped on that was an arm, and at the same place. Uh, the, yeah, at the same exactly. Place. I haven't snapped an. I have exactly like you. And mm. then the last yesterday that I flew at Highland, I I crashed and like the arm broke where you put the motor, like right at the end. It mm. must have like landed on that and like, mm. not fully broke, but it twisted up enough to where the motor was lifted. I was like, all right, I'm gonna call it yeah, because yeah, if not, I didn't wanna like... fly anything else. Yeah. And bro, like I go to the park with one reason and one reason only, and it's to fly, be happy, yeah. and to make a video, right? right? For, mm. for the what I'm doing now, because we talk a lot about, we've spoken a lot about, and this is going off topic of the of the conversation we're having, but we spoke a lot about the first pack slow cruise. Yeah. So now when you see it in motion and I'm describing it and you start seeing person here, person there, oh, this obstacle wasn't there. Oh, the signal sucks here. Yeah, it's eye it starts making sense. Yeah, it's eye oh, shit. So much sense that people are like, yeah, that's really good. You could have a spotter or I do the same thing. Word. Let me say this, that I witnessed and partook in this same thing, man. I We spoke about this, mm -hmm. but yet I was out with um, one of the brothers, shout out to Tatiko, and I was rushing to try to get the shot and it wasn't working out for me. Mm -hmm. You know what? I wasn't treating it like a profession. I wasn't treating it like, yo, slow down, cruise around, check it out, you know, learn, learn the lay of the land. Instead, I wanted to go, because I went there the first time already, yeah, yeah. I wanted to go the second time and try to, you know, warm up first pack and then, you know, keep going the second. But mm -hmm. it was by about pack four or five was where I started getting one. It takes that much time. Yeah. You have to get your fingers loose again. Yeah. You know, that that's the importance of the first pack slow cruise, you know? But, so the Apex, the Impulse RC for yeah. me is number one. For sure. Uh, I, I really, another reason why I left the Apex alone is because they did away with the legacy Apex and now the Evo runs. And I don't like the Evo. Yeah. I, I just don't like it at all. Yeah. So I'm not going to pay $90 for something I don't I like. You. And honestly, the DRP frame flies so damn well that I have no desire to buy any more frames other than that. So I'm going to leave I'm going to leave Impulse RC on a positive because we still have some frames left over on the bench. We're going to rock those so the wheels fall off and then we're going to venture off into our own. For sure. And like I've said it before, if I go to a job, the DRP frame is not going to that job. The yeah. Impulse RC is going to that job because it has everything that has been tested. The quad has been running for 2 yeah. years, so I know it's not going to fail. Brain you know what I'm trust. I know it's not going to fail. Absolutely. For sure, man. One of the brands that encompasses more than just being a brand, right? That's really the backbone of the quad because without this, you cannot fly. Mm. Is Team Black Sheep? Woo! No, absolutely, man. You got to talk about without it. Without a crossfire, you are not flying. And of course, it could be a ELRS or or your FR Sky receiver or your Spectrum or whatever it talk is. Talk about it. But for me, mm -hmm. crossfire 
all day, through and through. Yeah. No doubt about it. There's no, there's not even the slightest doubt in my mind that I want to try Tracer or ELRS <laughs> or any other like crap. Crossfire all day. For sure. It and is. I, were, were you flying when Crossfire had this stupid problem of binding that it wouldn't bind? It would bind and then the lights would blink? Yeah, you had to shut it off. You had to shut it off and restart or reconnect it. No, but there was a time, bro, uh, maybe two years ago, mm. maybe during COVID, mm. when you could spend 45 minutes trying to bind this fucking thing. Unplug yeah, it, plug no, it in, no, master you... reset, plug it in, and it would get, it would bind, and then when it's it's binding complete, and then both things, the, the nano would blink twice, and the crossfire would blink green. The, the tango or whatever crossfire. Yeah, they uh, they worked the kinks out of that, man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Was... Big big salute to, to Trappy yeah. and Wayne over there. The rest at, of the team at Team Black Sheep. You guys sure. are doing marvelous things. I saw a video, uh, a post, sorry, on Facebook asking, are you guys still doing things or or is the Team Black Sheep reign over? And I'm like, what are you, are you who said saying, that? bro? Who? What are you saying? And, and Trappy answers, you know, there's a lot of big things coming. Don't don't let the fact that we're silent fool you. And one thing that I love, and I don't remember who said this in a rap, but our our killers move in silence. You know, oh. you don't have to make big fusses and stuff when you're a brand like Team Black Sheep. Ooh, I love that. You don't have to. I love that. Team Black Sheep is industry standard, Absolutely. gold standard Absolutely. at that. You know, and I dare anybody to challenge that. Nah, man. Uh, nah, I'm nah. Done. I think you nah, can. Nah, man. Team Black Sheep has been around since before they, FPV was a thing. They will. They will. I have a lot of a fam in this circle, um, and the gangs of the tri-state as well that like to that like to big up the other ones, the other companies, and things like that. And um, and also the tracer. You know, respect to those who love the tracer. But it's still Team Black Sheep. Respect to those who who want to do ELRS. But I I won't be going down that road because I stick with the brand I can trust and the Absolutely. brand I can trust is the originators of this man so team black sheep is the way to go for me as well the only reason why somebody would switch to ELRS over crossfire is because of the price because hmm. a nano cost the without the immortal T is 20 bucks or 22 bucks I think and an ELRS is like 12 dollars hmm. so for that I totally understand it you know because times are rough and economy you know being economic about the yeah. whole thing is is something that mm. i understand but i don't want you to sit here and try and convince me that elrs is better because it's not <laughs> well, because if it was then everybody would use it right it'd be, right it'd but be no the, the crossfire guys and more people come into the hobby and more people still go with crossfire over elrs you know for sure o otherwise it wouldn't be mm. that way it would swing the other way just like just as, as simple as that and not just the the nano team black sheep has my favorite all-time remote controller the tango 2 the tango 2 whether it's the pro or not it's the same thing the tango 2 pro has the foldable gimbals which makes it cool for right. storing but the tango 2 regular one flies exactly the same just that the gimbals don't fold yeah that's all i know that i came in with the tango 2 pro that's all i know i flew with the fr sky the tyrannus the x9d I've flown the Mambo also. Mambo is a great remote. So is the Tyrannus. Top notch. But just the ergonomics of the Tango 2 for me were a game changer because there's, it's so small, mm. you know? Yeah. With, the, with, the, with the Tyrannus, you, I had to sit with it on my lap and, mm. and, and fly like this. The Tango 2, I could cross my legs. I could get up. I could put it in my hoodie pocket, right. you know? Like yeah. yesterday I crashed. I was sitting in the parking lot and I crashed by the Jackie. So I grabbed the camera and I grabbed my remote, stuck my tango here and walked with my tango here because I'm not a lanyard guy, you know, so yeah. like stuck it in my hoodie mm. and we were off. Yeah. I would not be able to do that with a Mambo. I would not be. A, and nothing against Radio Master because I know there's a huge Radio Master movement going, but they feel cheap to me in my hands. You mean like the the casing? The casing, the gimbals, the way they move, they don't feel you grab the TBS gimbal and it's nice and tight mm. and it it it's it's not easy to play with. Mm. I feel when I grab the Radio Master gimbals and I could be wrong, this is just from my experience, they feel loose and they feel toyish. Hmm. Yeah. What about you guys? What do you think? Yeah, what? I know. Listen, there's a huge Radio Master movement. I know, I know. There's a lot of people that that's the, the radio to use. Don't use no other because you're not really flying if yeah. you're not using that radio. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's that's great that you said that because 
People need to stop convincing people of this is the radio you got to use and these are the motors you got to use. No, yeah. you use what you want to use. Whatever you want to use. If you want to use the cheapest dirt shit for your quads, <laughs> then by all means, use them, man. Use them. People think that because they spend nine ninety nine for a motor, oh, I'm saving money. You're not saving money if you're spending three times the amount of motors. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're breaking a motor on, on the first guys. crash... And then you got to buy another $10 motor and another $10 motor. Guess what? You just paid $30 mm -hmm. for a set of motor, one motor, when you just could have bought the $30 motor and it probably would have taken all three bashes, you know? Shit, man. So don't confuse cheapness for durability. Nah, man, for sure. No cheapness, man. Let's bring that thing right back home, man. A brand you could trust, man. A one-stop shop right here in the United States of America. One of our very own. Yes, Let's sir. Let's give him the shout. He deserves it. He, he, he works hard for it, man. He prints some of the best prints out here on the East Coast, maybe in the nation as well. He's got a lot of comp out there, but you know what? The man's been putting out the hits. He serves the public, has been a part of my growth. Let's give a shout out to one of my favorite brands, Fly High. Yes, sir. PV 3D, Fly and High. then some. We're going to insert the logo right here. Bum. You Bum. know what I'm saying? Now, Fly High, great shop. Great shop. Not just that, the man is... All about the hobby. Service, man. The, all about the hobby. He's a brother just like us, so he knows what it is that you want, when you want, how you feel. So he's going to try to do the best he possibly can to make sure that he gets you up in the air. Absolutely, bro. Some of the best 3D print. I love how he started. He started as a 3D printer. That, so cool. That's, that's what it was. He just, he just had a passion for 3D printing. And from then, he, you know, yeah. a component here, a component there. Yeah. Now the man spends hundreds of thousands of dollars in parts a year. Yeah, there's there's definitely a, a lot of history before we even picked up um, on who David is, man. But for sure, I'm sure there was an RC like before, you know, we, we even got to, you know, well, I myself, I'm going to speak for myself. When I jumped on the scene, you know, it just seemed like like he was more knowledgeable of RC like before, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, delved into the, uh, the quad thing. I meet uh, David Fly High FPV. I meet him because uh, El Buo started 3D printing mm -hmm. and he was already 3D printing. So he was kind of like showing El Buo the way and a couple of settings here mm -hmm. and a couple of help there. And that's how we become uh, in contact with Fly High FPV, you know? Super cool. Yeah. And through the years, uh, we haven't been tight. Yeah. But over the last few months, we've become much better friends, and I speak to him very often. And shout out to you, bro. Yeah, this, no, uh, sure. I, 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 truth be told, one of the main reasons I wanted to make this episode was to give Fly High FPV a shout out because the man deserves it. No, absolutely. Besides being a great store, it's just he's all about the community. He is. He has knowledge that goes beyond what most people does. Information that goes beyond what people have. And that, to me, is the most important thing of this hobby. Facts. So for that, my friend, we salute facts, you, brother. Facts, man. Facts. He was a big part of my growth, man, when I was in Florida as well, man. He was always there answering texts. He was answering DMs and stuff like that. Always there to help, man. And that's what the community is about, man. He showed me what the communities are about and and that right there sparked an inspiration in me man to want to do the same when i got back home because all i was doing i was just like preparing myself man for the get back when i got back home man i had a mission in mind man and here we are papa yeah bro we're here this man, man had a mission and he's accomplishing it man here he's we are. he's more than on his way let's oh, so you. we've touched on motors yeah. electronics yeah frames yeah let me ask you this props yeah, you gonna do that to me? <laughs> you gonna do that to Hell me? Yeah. Listen, my favorite prop, my favorite prop alone. Uh -huh. my, you know, some might not like it. Some might get mad at me for saying this. I may lose a friend or two. They God, weren't friends. God bless you all. But I'm gonna stand on my ten toes and say that I haven't touched a better prop than the P3 Peanut Butter and Jelly Ethics Props by HQ. Love it. Love no it. lie. No Love lie, it. man. And that right there encompasses two brands. HQ props and ethics. Woo! Let's go. And and same. I was uh I was a S3, the uh, watermelon guy. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, actually no, I was the uh, lemon limes lemon first. Limes, lemon yeah. limes. But yeah. that was when I was a 1750 guy. Mm. When I was using 1750 KV. When I jumped up to the 1950s and 20s and 75, but the 19 KV, uh, lemon limes were too fast. 
You out there racing. At that point of my life, it was too fast, so I went down to the watermelons. Mm -hmm. And I used watermelons for the better part of three years. And so I saw, I, I wanted to copy. I wanted to get the props you was using. Yeah, I was like, yeah. yo, I need those. I need those. And that's so funny you say that, bro, because when I take my hiatus from FPV and I stop flying and I dedicate my life to building and tuning mm -hmm. and all this stuff, when I come back and we start flying together, you're on the PB&Js, the P3s, mm -hmm. and I'm still on watermelons. Yeah. And shit was slow. It wasn't fast anymore. So then I stepped it up to peanut butter and jellies, and now that's the prop. It's a completely different flight, bro. And unlike frames, I have literally flown every single brand of props that is out there. Every single brand, including the cheap fucking uh, Amazon props that you get like 20 Oof. for like $15. All those. Dow props, gem fams. Uh, there's one called Ray. T motor, like name them, Azure, the Johnny props, yeah. all of them. Yeah. And this is besides flight characteristics, because mm -hmm. that's the that's the major. Because Correct. I'll be honest with you, if GemFam made me fly the way I fly with HQs, I wouldn't care about the durability. I wouldn't care because it's what how it flies. Mm. But besides the way that they fly, the durability of an HQ prop, okay. HQ, not necessarily ethics, because the V twos i think it is the prop the vs twos or whatever i've flown various hq props and they all perform the same mm. you bend the shit out of a hq prop that it has a fucking lump coming out of it and you could massage it right back and you'll see the line where it bent but it'll be almost perfectly straight but the the hq prop for me and like i said it's about what i've tested what i've proven and to me hq hands down mm. and ethics also, you know, you know, um, I'm going to give a huge shout out to um, Mike Duran from Gen Fan Props because he is for the people and not that I do not like the Gen Fan Props because I do like Gen Fan Props, but they're not my favorite and, and it isn't because of personalities or anything like that. And unlike HQ, I haven't seen a representative like Mike out there with the people yes. and connecting with the community so for that reason i'm gonna give him a shout out because he deserves honorable mention and not that we're shitting on the brand on the brand at all it's just what what do we what's my favorite recipe and my favorite recipe just happened to get to me experiencing all these props including gym fan props yeah yeah because yeah, i've sure. i've been buying gym fan props for a while now mm -hmm. but i landed at the p3 and i just haven't seen my quad react the way it does with uh, any other prop aside from that. Yeah, listen, to, to add to that, uh, there was a moment in time when I was living in China that when I first started buying FPV parts in China, I couldn't get HQ props easily, and I used wind dancers for a while. And the wind dancers were fucking fabulous, bro, and I was paying like a buck and a quarter per pack. Wow. Yeah, super cheap, bro, yeah, yeah. super cheap. But I flew them for a few months, and... They didn't have the same type of durability. Like I said, they got nicked, they got bent, and it was not easy to bend them back. And then just like Fat Tech Kiss and all the stuff I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. when I got my hands on HQ again, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, yes. You know what? Okay, now I know why. And again, I, if you know me, I don't shit on anybody. Yeah. I have no intentions of putting anybody down. This is purely my experience, my opinions, how I feel about it. Just small touch on the whole beef between uh, bot and uh, I don't remember who else, drone something. Drone camps. Drone what? Drone camps. Seems like yeah, drone camps. There you go. We here at Pilots and Pirates don't have affiliate links. We have nothing invested in trying to sell guys anything. We're just telling our experience. That's all it is. Sure. That's all it is. I have no interest in convincing anybody that they should use what I use. No, on the contrary. If you ever ask me, I recommend you try everything. Word. And make a decision for yourself. Don't go by what people tell you. Yeah. Because what works for me might not work for him. For sure. And what works for him might not work for me. You know? That's why we have these conversations. Absolutely. Excuse me for cutting you off no, because no. I don't necessarily agree with everything it is that you say. And you don't necessarily agree mm -hmm. with everything it is that I say. Yeah. Look, uh, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to Abu in a while. But when before he moved... He was a KISS guy, mm -hmm. and I believe now he's a T-Motor guy. And he swore up and down by KISS when we were using it. Mm -hmm. And then because it wasn't accessible during COVID and all these things, he had to switch, and he's sponsored by T-Motor, so he switched everything to T-Motor, you know? Right. And now he swears by T-Motor, right? And once upon a time, he swore by KISS. So it's just really what works for you, 
what you do. And that's the thing that I love most about this hobby, mm. that there is no right and wrong. You do what works for you. This is the only hobby that you buy a brand new component and take it apart. <laughs> right, right. Brand new. You spend three, four hundred dollars on something, and De as soon it. as you get it, boom, let's take it apart. De let's let's just take the things that we don't need from it. The last thing I'm going to say, and this is probably going to cause a little bit of controversy because this brand is not uh, known for its... Uh, honesty and transparency Ooh, i know exactly where you're going <laughs> but yet for me it's top of the line hmm. dji without them we're not going to be able to see as clear as we want to see hey and listen i was flying today and i we've gotten a lot of different uh conversations about um penetration of the new goggles the v well not new but the goggles too and range and this and that so I was flying at Highland mm -hmm. from the parking lot uh, on the other side. Not where we park uh, to the left, but to the right, closer to the bowl. Okay. And you know how the, you're downhill, so right. the, the park climbs, mm -hmm. right? So I'm cruising the, the um, in the last video I put, I'm cruising the sidewalk next to the Jackie Robinson, and I have 14 megabits. Perfect. Saw perfect. There was a little bit of breakup, but nothing that was disrupting my latency. Didn't come up? No, it didn't come up. But then I remembered that when you got anywhere under 20 megabits on the V2s, it was shit. Mm -hmm. It started fucking Glitch. glitching and latency, but I persisted on going. Bro, perfect. No problem. So I, I, in the video I made, I say that I think it has better range. The penetration might not be as good, mm. but it definitely has better range. I went around the bowl. I went... No problem. Stock pro, uh, stock antennas. Stock antennas. Right. No problem. Not at all. But DJI, we have to give a mention because I think, I, I don't know the percentage, but I'd be willing to bet that it's somewhere between 70 and 80% of the people fly DJI goggles. Yeah, yeah. And maybe not the air unit. You might use the Vista. Mm -hmm. You might use the Run Cam. Mm -hmm. But regardless, it's DJI technology. It's just Correct. made by yeah. different companies because the Vista is a DJI product licensed to Cadex to make it. And the run cam uh, link is the same thing. It's a, it's a run cam product, but DJI gave the licensing to them to make it. So whether you, whichever one you use, it's DJI. And on Pilots and Pirates, we give props and props are deserved. Whether you're a shady company or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We use you guys. We, we purchase y'all. We invest in you. Um, so we hope to get feedback from you guys as well and see what you could do to make things better. Absolutely. And listen, the last thing that I don't think anybody mentions, because it's not directly a component of a quad, but mm -hmm. we do use it on every single one of our quads. What's that? Sane Smart Filament. Hey, hey, hey. Sane Smart Filament. I don't know uh, what people use mm -hmm. but when i got into 3d printing same smart was the brand recommended and i have never switched and my 3d prints look great they're very durable they hold up to a hit so i want to give same smart a shout out because cheap and good and there's no better combination than that <laughs> we like cheap and we good. like cheap and good for you sure. know so that for me is top-notch brands of FPV. And I'm sure there's brands... No, I'm not sure. I know that mm. we haven't touched on yeah, a lot of brands. So many, many brands. But as we said, these are the brands that have been kind to us and we have chosen to stick with them because they did good by us. You know? Yeah, for sure. From from then till now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and listen, we're open to trying any brands. We have things coming up. I would like to touch on that, man. I wanted to say a big thank you and a huge shout out. We've been receiving some really great feedback. And there was a couple companies that reached out to us and uh, have extended their hand and want to partake and also support in what it is we're doing. Absolutely. And that is truly amazing, man. I'm elated. I'm super excited. You won't see me doing backflips right now, but we don't have we, space. We don't have the space, <laughs> but man, that's truly inspiring that you believe in what it is we're doing here. You know, I asked one of my heroes, man, how do I how do I get sponsored by a certain company that I'm that, you know, that I want to look at me and stuff like that. And I got kind of some harsh answers, but it's direct and it's it's kind of the, the stuff that you need. Like it's a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you gotta you gotta button up. You really wanna play with the big boys, then you gotta sharpen up. You gotta you gotta button up your style. You gotta actually make some sort of noise. And that's with with diligence. 
you know, motivation and diligence and persistence, man. And that's exactly what's been happening here yeah. with uh, with us. And I want to say thank you personally, mm -hmm. because without this kind of motivation and diligence, um, there wouldn't be those folks out there that believe in what it is we're trying to do for the community because they say good on us for what it is we're doing. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. And with what you're saying, I want to give a very special shout out. They're not a brand, but I think they're going to be uh, a, a huge statement moving forward. Fly Tribe Magazine. Oh, shout out to Fly Tribe Magazine. I think what Fly Tribe is doing is something incredible. They are a magazine, the first magazine in FPV, the first and the only. And what they're doing is amazing. They're amazing putting platform. our uh, digital uh, world mm -hmm. into paper. Absolutely, man. You know? Yeah. For those of you that like to read in the bathroom, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> you know, you put the phone down, pick up a magazine like we did back in the day. You know, put that phone down and catch yourself a Fly Tribe magazine Absolutely. because not only are they doing something amazing for the hobby, I've spoken to them numerous times and they're amazing people. Really Great people, people, very like inspiring, that. and just pushing this beautiful world that we live in of drones forward. And that's what we're about. We are about moving this forward in harmony. Absolutely. With the right vibration, with the right people around you, you can move mountains. Moving forward, pushing forward together in this culture to say, oh, yeah, to all our family members and friends, all the pilots and pirates that tune in, that stop by just to say hi to us. Thank you guys, man. Peace. Peace. For sure. This has been fun, man. Yeah, bro. That shit was good.